Let's pray. Father in Jesus' mighty name, we thank you for this wonderful day. <clears throat> we are grateful, O oh God, that your presence is here with us as we begin this wonderful time of listening and learning from the scriptures. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that this truth of the person who dwells on the inside of us, who is greater in every way than the wicked one who dwells in this earth and in this world, will be made real to us as we hear from you, the mind of God, and learn more and more about the person of the Holy Spirit and the working of the Holy Spirit. We give you thanks and praise for every ear that is attentive to the sound of your voice. We are grateful, O oh God, that hearts are open to receive the word that is engrafted and able to save souls also, Father. Thank you, Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So grateful that God opened our ears to hear and our eyes to see and our understanding to know and receive from Him. A few more deep truths about the person of the Holy Spirit last week. Today I want to continue still with this wisdom key. We are not in a hurry to learn about this wisdom key because much hinges on our understanding about the Blessed Holy Spirit. We have been learning about how the Holy Spirit intercedes for us with groanings which cannot be uttered in an intelligible language. And I shared with you in brief about how it is very necessary for us to respect the Holy Spirit and to honor and celebrate His presence. To speak against Him is to speak against the very person who has been sent to help us lead an overcoming life. So it's not going to be very helpful or beneficial to anybody who does it. Today, I want to share with you in continuation of what we studied from Acts chapter 10, verses 34 onwards to 38, and then a little bit down, we went studying more about how the Holy Spirit confirm the word with signs and wonders following. When you read about how Jesus gave his disciples authority or power against all unclean spirits to cast them out, I want you to make a note of that word against. And come with me, please, to an example I'd like to share with you from the book of Judges. You may have read it many times. You may have heard me teach it also many times. But because it's in line with the blessed Holy Spirit and His working, it's good for us to study it again. Judges. Chapter 13. And verse 25. And the Spirit of the Lord began to move him at times in the camp of Dan between Zorah and Eshtol. I want you to make a very strong note of what is written here. The Spirit of the Lord began to move him I want you to know that the Holy Spirit can insist on certain things in our lives when we are sensitive to Him. He doesn't force us, He moves us. I want you to highlight the word move Him. He doesn't force us. You can write it down there, not forcing, but moving. 
How does he move you to do certain things? You know that as the Holy Spirit moves in you, there is a certain amount of desire created for you to do certain things. Now there are certain people who will always desire wrong things and say the Holy Spirit told them to do it. You can understand the move of the Holy Spirit from the word of God. Again I tell you, don't learn about the Holy Spirit from worship songs. Learn about the Holy Spirit from the Bible. Learn about the Holy Spirit from the word of God. Now in Judges chapter 14, we are going to read verses 5 and 6. I want to show you how being moved by the Spirit takes place. Then went Samson down and his father and his mother to Timnath and came to the vineyards of Timnath. And behold, a young lion rode against him. I wanted to circle the word against him. It looked like the lion singled out Samson. He was with his father, he was with his mother. They didn't pose a challenge to this young lion. This young lion was attracted to the one on whom the spirit of God was. That's why I want you to pay close attention to what we will be studying today. You can be in the company of people and you are singled out by the enemy. Don't think it strange that you are singled out because you are being singled out because you have the greater one in you and a challenge is going up against you to destroy you. Now the question is, how do you react? The challenge is against you. That's why the Bible says, a young lion rode against him. And the Spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him and he rent him as he would have rent a kid. And he had nothing in his hand. But he told not his father or his mother what he had done. That means it looks like this young lion was waiting for the father and mother to move. It didn't mean anything to the young lion that these, the two old people were a challenge to his territory. When Samson came, you must understand, Samson was separated to be a Nazarite. And he had entered the vineyards of Timnath. He wanted to highlight all these things. As a Nazarite, he was not supposed to be in close proximity to anything that had to do with the grapevine. Please write these things down and learn them because you must understand it was in this place that the challenge came out. Sometimes when you are walking into enemy territory, you are going to be challenged by the enemy. The question is, what are you going to do? In the natural, by the carnal, man's ideas you cannot overcome. Because the scripture tells us, and the spirit of the Lord came mightily upon him. Hallelujah. So important for you to understand this word. It came mightily upon him. And he rent this young lion as he would have rent a kid. That means a tender young little newborn lamb is so soft and tender that anybody with any kind of strength can literally pull it asunder. That's the way he dealt with this young lion. But it didn't happen because he was a weightlifter or a bodybuilder. 
it happened because the spirit of the lord came mightily upon him and moved him against what was opposing him what was trying to raise up a challenge against his life and calling and he had nothing in his hand but he told not his father or his mother what he had done that means it was so swiftly executed that his parents maybe they were walking a little ahead of him or they were in already passed that place and had gone a little ahead of him he never uttered a word and they didn't even have any idea of what was happening behind them you must understand when the holy spirit moves his move is always against anything that challenges your call your life your destiny and what god has purposed for you to do in your lifetime that's why the holy spirit comes together with you against san san anti lam banoi he comes together with you against he came together with samson against the opposition against the challenge against the roar of the young lion now we're going to continue as we study about why when you grieve the holy spirit he withdraws his manifest presence from your life now we always have understood this from the life of samson in judges the bible tells us chapter 16 bible tells us that he loved a woman in the valley of sorek whose name was delilah here in judges chapter 16 we read a little more about this woman delilah as somebody who was paid by the philistines to find out the secret about samson's strength now this by itself is very uh, uh very clear to us about how they knew that something was special about the strength expressed by this man it wasn't that samson was impressive to look at in the natural they believed and they were right that there was something more to it than natural strength that this man possessed and they wanted to know what was the secret of this supernatural strength and so in judges chapter 16 she is paid a good sum of money and then she begins to work on this man systematically trying to find out where his strength was coming from and then he goes on to talk to her in verse 17 and tells her all his heart and how he has been a nazarite he or he had been a nazarite unto god from his mother's womb now let's move down a little bit and after she's got this uh truth out of samson and she knows that there's nothing more hidden and it's making sense to her she may not have understood it fully but she knew that something was connected to god in this man's strength that she has him uh the seven locks of his head to be shaved off and began to afflict him and his strength went from him and she said the philistines be unto upon the samson and he awoke out of his sleep and said i will go out as at other times before and shake myself and he wist not that the lord was departed from him you know often we have spoken and heard it spoken to us about samson but you must understand that the holy spirit withdraws his manifest presence only when certain things happen and that's what we are going to find out 
today as we study the scriptures so we understand what makes the holy spirit withdraw his presence from a person in the case of samson it was a very deliberate move by samson to be in the camp of the enemy lying with the enemy that created a situation in which the holy spirit departed from his life you must understand this very clearly the holy spirit never leaves a person just like that this was a systematic over a period of time move with things that didn't actually have to do with anything that samson had ordained for him to be done in his lifetime his entire movement was with people associating with people that was not in exact line with god's will for his life in the case of uh, what we have just read in the life of samson he was with delilah a woman who was just no better than a uh, woman of the world she was a worldly woman and this woman was willing to be swayed with money to work on this man and to find out what was the secret of his strength and to you know uh, let him be at the mercy of the philistines because all that she was interested in was money there was no remorse in her heart sometimes when you watch the movie uh, samson and delilah uh, delilah is uh, portrayed in a very uh, you know repentant uh, way and in a repentant light in the movie but that's not the case if you read the scriptures the bible tells us the moment she delivered samson into the hands of the philistines she is not on the scene she was not the one who took him and put his hands on the pillars that held up the auditorium where all the lords of the philistines had gathered so you must be very careful that's why some of these movies that we see they call themselves christian movies they're not exactly christian they're not in line with the scriptures they have a lot of content that is just added to make the movie run the bible tells us in the book of judges this woman was a worldly woman and as a worldly woman money fame those things were of greater importance to her than the power of god and the strength of god and being a natural enemy Uh, to Samson because Samson was an Israelite and she was a Philistine it was but natural for her to have some resentment in her heart about this man there wasn't any true love in her heart for Samson now there's another scripture portion i want to share with you that is found in the book of hosea and we are going to study that today to learn about why the holy spirit is offended by certain things and he removes his manifest presence from our lives come with me please to hosea chapter 5 and verse 15 hosea chapter 5 and verse 15 now when you read hosea chapter 5 and verse 15 it reads like this i will go and return to my place till they acknowledge their offense and seek my face in their affliction they will seek me early this entire chapter is talking about how there is a phrase used here the spirit of ordums that when it begins to work amongst god's people 
causes the Holy Spirit to withdraw his presence from the person, individual or even a congregation. Look at, look at verse 6, Hosea chapter 5 verse 6. They shall go with their flocks and with their herds to seek the Lord, but they shall not find him. He had withdrawn himself from them. What has caused this terrible thing to make the Holy Spirit withdraw his presence? We all know that the Holy Spirit comes to dwell inside a person. He will never break his promise to be with us till the very end. But there are certain things that makes him enhance his presence or withdraw his presence. Now, what is it that makes the Holy Spirit withdraw his presence? We read it in the previous chapter. And it's terrible because this particular phrase, the spirit of odoms, is clearly, very, very clearly highlighted for us. It says here in Hosea chapter 4, verse 10 onwards, For they shall eat and not have enough. They shall come into odom and shall not increase, because they are left off to take heed to the Lord. Number one. Just put number one. They have left off to take heed to the Lord. That means no longer does the Holy Spirit's voice mean anything to them. Their ears are deaf to God. They don't want to hear from God any longer. They don't want to be in his manifest presence any longer. O them and wine and new wine take away the heart. That's number two. Now there is a replacing of the Holy Spirit in the lives of these people. Everything else except the Lord. Now this word Odom is written here, but we understand it in a place where we are talking about a laxity in moral standards. At the same time, anything that is intoxicating, that's why we read about that phrase, wine and new wine, take away the heart. That means they are not satisfied with the things that intoxicate their feelings. They like to have it more and more and more and more. That's number two. Number three. My people ask counsel at their stocks. I wanted to highlight this please in your Bible. Because I want to read to you how all this affects the life of a person. I have some translations that I want to share with you, but I wanted to just highlight this. My people ask counsel at their stocks. That means they're not asking counsel again from God. They're going to astrologers. They're going to visioners, people with visions and dreams. Uh, they, the so-called uh, experts in visions and dreams. Their counsel is more from them than from God. And... Their staff declareth unto them. That means they have a rod in their hands. Now they're talking to the rod. In other words, there is a shift from God and his spirit as counselor. Remember, we read from the book of John, the gospel of John, that the Holy Spirit will be the other comforter, advocate, counselor, and comforter. That's his major, major uh, nature. Advocate, comforter, and counselor. Now they don't look to the Holy Spirit for counsel. Impatience, intoxicated feelings, more desiring to live by what they feel than by the things that pertains to God, which is faith and patience and so many things that helps us inherit the promises of God. Now th those things are cast aside. And so what they do is they speak to things that have no life and ask those things for counsel. For the spirit of odems has caused them to err. I wanted to highlight that. So what is the spirit of odems? Odems can be defined not just 
in line only with immorality. It also has to do with anything you place ahead of God. Anything or anybody. Today there are people who are placing a lot of things that they shouldn't place ahead of God. They do it with impunity, thinking they can somehow get away with it. They don't know that if you worship God, you have to understand He is above all. Remember what Peter said. He is Lord of all. He should be Lord over all. His Lordship cannot be challenged. His Lordship cannot be disqualified in your life. But some people do that all the time. So what is happening is, that spirit of odems has caused them to err. That means now they are walking in error. So when you are walking in error, that means you are walking away from the truth, you are walking away from the word, the Holy Spirit withdraws his presence. It's not something he likes to do, but he can't go along with you after a point. This is what I want you to understand. His holiness and righteousness is so prominent in his nature that after a point he cannot go along with what you are doing. That means, if you are trying to live a lifestyle where you are letting your old past life in sin and your preferences to the faith that you once had, because all of us had some kind of a faith life at one time, although it was not in line with the faith of God. It is a life of either worshipping religion or worshipping religious icons or religious ideas. Now all that, if you put that again into your life, it amounts to going after the spirit of odoms, because sooner or later you are going to err from the truth. You are going to walk in what is called error. The Bible says, and they have gone oaring from under their God. How clearly the scriptures tell us what causes the Holy Spirit to withdraw his presence. When you come out from under God, you are on your own. You are on your own. Some people come out from under God's protection by despising the blood of Jesus. There are others who come out from under God's divine guidance and protection and counsel when they despise the Holy Spirit. They may say, I love the Holy Spirit, but they despise him really. They mock his working. They question his working. They attribute his works to the works of demons and darkness and Satan. It's dangerous. So what happens? Verse 13. Verse 13. Verse 13 tells us, they sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains. Now, because they have moved away from God, they manifest a different kind of a spirit in their life. They sacrifice upon the tops of the mountains and burn incense upon the hills under oaks and poplars and elms. Therefore, because the shadow thereof is good, therefore your daughter shall commit odom and your spouses shall commit adultery. So what happens when you walk in error? All kinds of symptoms of dissolution, the curse, everything that has to do with loose liberal thought patterns begins to dominate your life and it enters into your home and affects the family. Are you listening? When you put others before God, sooner or later this is going to happen. And then the Bible says in verse 16, For Israel slideth back as a backsliding heifer. Now the Lord will feed them as a lamb in a large place. Ephraim is joined to idols. I wanted to highlight that phrase. 
There is backsliding. Some people say, what is this phrase backsliding? Backsliding is nothing but adopting your old thought life. Adopting your old lifestyle. Adopting your old faith. It can be any kind of thing. So I said to you, if you are given to worshipping icons, if you are given to worshipping uh, saints, if you are given to worshipping and uh, falling down and prostrating yourself before so-called uh, apparitions of certain uh, so-called uh, deities and saints, sooner or later, Bible says you are joined to idols. That means that has become an idol in your life. You are idolizing something. The word joined literally in the New Living Translation reads as married yourself to idols. That means the Holy Spirit withdraws his presence when he finds a new God of your own making has taken his place. That means now it's like the golden calves that the Israelites produced in the wilderness when Moses had gone up Sinai to talk to God, Mount Sinai. Here in the valley, all of them were in a different mindset and they made a golden calf and they declared that this is the golden calf that brought us out of Egypt. How awfully abominable that statement has, must have been in the sight of God. Listen very carefully. In verse 17 the Bible says Ephraim, Ephraim is another name for Israel, Ephraim is joined to idols or married to idols. Let him alone. That means leave him. Don't come to the place where God withdraws his Holy Spirit from you and just lets you go on doing your own stuff. That's the worst thing you can do to yourself and it's going to be a disservice to you in the long run. Why? Because God tries to deal with you every now and then. Even now, as I speak to you, He's trying to make you see the error of your ways. But if you're not willing to change, you're not willing to listen, you're not listening to the word of God, you're not listening to the one who's preaching the word, you're totally saying, no, I'll just continue doing this. I'll continue go after these people. I'll continue listening to them. My friend, you're in big trouble. So big that you don't know how awfully terrible the mistake of the error you're adopting is affecting your life. Because the very person who dwells on the inside of you is not a glorified spirit. Not a uh, angel who's now being sent to stay inside you know it's the very person of God he's creator God you can't substitute his presence for any person or thing in your life don't do it this is a word of not only warning to all of us but it's also a word by which we understand that when God moves away from us or withdraws his presence from us, like we are studying about the Holy Spirit, it becomes very, very tough to handle things in our life. What is the first noticeable effect of this? The first noticeable effect that his presence has withdrawn from your life is depression. Again, repeat, the first visible manifestation of God's withdrawal from your life is depression. You can write that down. If you feel depressed, you can understand that your depression has been caused because of God's Holy Spirit withdrawing His presence. It's very important that you learn this as quickly as you can.
So when you notice somebody is depressed, going through depression, in all probability, the Holy Spirit is not in perfect manifestation in their lives. That is why they go through depression. Now sometimes they put the blame on many factors. That can be there and it could be true to a certain extent. But the basic underlying strength of what we are studying is, when the Holy Spirit is at work, there will be no oppression. Because according to what we have studied from Acts chapter 10 verse 38, oppression, depression, anything that is negative comes from not God, who is the doer of everything good, but it comes from the devil who is totally against a person and a person's destiny and he is against everything in the life of a person who especially is called of God. Now, I want you to see how when the Holy Spirit is present, what happens? When the Holy Spirit is present, there is such a great blessing of tremendous joy and fulfillment. We are going to come to that, but I just want to put before you about this place of, uh, you know, having the Holy Spirit withdraw His presence. It happens in the lives of many, many Christians today. And we are now talking about Israel. So when you are talking about Israel, in this context in the book of Hosea, or Hosea, it is referring directly to covenant people. God's not talking about non-covenant people. He's talking about covenant people. So covenant people has to do with, or has to do with uh, uh, people in the church, people who are born again. When they walk through depression, in most instances, it's because they neglect the presence of the Holy Spirit, neglect the person of the Holy Spirit, have put someone else or something else ahead of him, now, instead of faith and perfect love dominating their heart, there is fear dominating their heart. I mean, these are all the symptoms of a person who has moved away from the presence of God. And in the process, the Holy Spirit's presence is now no more manifesting itself like it should be in manifestation. So there is no joy any longer in the person's heart. There is fear torment, depression, guilt, continuous guilt and then there is this attitude of trying to push what is inside them onto someone else. I have noticed certain people and they have come into prominence of late that when they go through a situation instead of clinging to God and overcoming that particular problem or that situation in their life and letting the Holy Spirit guide them and counsel them and bring them out. Now what they do is, they start listening to some deceiving voice. And the deceiving voice becomes louder and louder and louder. And they can only hear that deceiving voice. And now they take that deceiving voice and push it on to others. Sometimes it's their friends, sometimes it's their relatives, sometimes it's their close family members and they start filling that person or that individual with thoughts of fear, thoughts of so-called religious, religious fear. It's not a fear of God, it's a religious fear. And now, not only do they walk in depression, they're trying to depress the others who are also open to listening to them. It's very dangerous. And it is a work of the spirit of odoms. It's not the work of the Holy Spirit, it is the work of the spirit of odoms. The spirit of odoms, like I told you, is anything that tries to substitute the person of God the Holy Spirit in your life with something that looks legitimate, something that looks real, something that looks religious, but in reality, it is trying to 
take the place of God in your life. And that's why I read to you about what happens when people ask counsel at their stocks and their staff declareth unto them. Hosea chapter 4 and verse 12. So when you come with some revelation and you say, this person saw a dream, that person heard a vision, uh, or had a vision and she heard this and that and this and that, and this person appeared in that vision and that person appeared in this vision, just get this right into your spirit. Nowhere in the scriptures is it ever recorded for us that we have people who have moved on, come back in visions and dreams to guide people and to counsel people. You must understand this very, very clearly, especially those who are always given to hyping uh, saints who have passed away and say, they came and they spoke to me and they came and told me this. Please listen. God's word is above what that saint said. God's word is above what you claim that angelic visitation from God uh, declared to you, but which is not in line with the written word of God. Come with me, let me uh, clarify this with you from the book of Galatians. Come with me to Galatians, please. And let me read to you a very, very important verse. Galatians chapter 1. And write it down, Galatians chapter 1. And I'm going to read to you verse 8. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you that which we have preached, than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. I want you to highlight this phrase. That means, if it is me, Paul says, or an angel from heaven, so-called angel from heaven. Now today people always say, I had a dream and I saw Peter say this. I had a dream and I saw the apostle Paul say that. Don't go by what those dreams and visions are talking about. Nobody is questioning what you saw. What we are trying to tell you is, you can't live by that. You can't live by what that angel said. You can't live by any vision and dream. The Bible tells us that we are to live by faith in God's word. And we are to be led by the Holy Spirit. The Bible says those who are led by the Holy Spirit are the mature sons of God. Not the ones who are led by visions and dreams. So you can go around saying, Mother Mary came and appeared to so and so, and she spoke this and this and this. It doesn't matter. We are not questioning whether that person saw Mother Mary. The idea is, you can't live by what that person is claiming Mother Mary told him or her. You can only live and base your life on God's word. So if you are given to this kind of deception, there is error that you are trying to let into your life that is going to make you err. And sooner or later the manifest presence of the Holy Spirit will not be seen in your life. You lose credibility. And what happens when you lose credibility? You will try to seek God early. Because when you are afflicted, you will begin to try to seek him out. And what happens is this, you, are, you fail to realize that the person of the Holy Spirit has been called by certain definite expressions of the word in certain ways. Let me read to you from Isaiah chapter 11 verse 2. Now this is explaining to us what, what would happen when Jesus came. And the spirit of the Lord shall rest upon him. First word, the spirit of wisdom. That's his name. 
the spirit of wisdom and understanding the spirit of counsel and might the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the lord now if you don't read this and understand it's referring to the holy spirit like i told you and in your mind side you feel they are little less and you don't consider the holy spirit an enough intercessor for you but you want peter to intercede for you in heaven paul to intercede for you in heaven mary to intercede for you in heaven you're in big trouble you're denying the work of the holy spirit you're denying his power in your life you're desecrating the person of the godhead who's dwelling on the inside of you and god is pleading with you not to do it because it's dangerous there cannot be a better intercessor than jesus in heaven and a better intercessor than the holy spirit on earth for us get this right don't play with evil don't play with disgusting thoughts of introducing new intercessors into your life even the people in the church whom you call intercessors don't take the place of the holy spirit they don't take the place of jesus they yield to the holy spirit in praying for others and in the process what happens we read that in james chapter 5 come with me to james chapter 5 and verse 16 i want to share this with you from the amplified bible james chapter 5 verse 16 confess to one another therefore your faults your slips your false steps your offenses your sins that means anyone in the christian faith is capable of erring and pray also for one another so that is permitted we don't take the place of jesus we pray for one another while we are on this earth that you may be healed and restored that means it's wrong for us to approach someone who's dead and implore that person to talk to god about us that's why it's very dangerous even for people to go to the graveyard and no matter how much they miss the person who has passed away in their life to sit there and talk to the tombstone and address the dead person and ask the dead person to talk to god about them please never never do something like this it doesn't matter if you want to go and look after a monument okay you have a place of remembrance we don't have any problems with that as far as the faith of god is concerned but if you are given to going and sitting at the tomb of dead people dead saints and addressing them and requesting them to talk to god about your condition or your circumstance you're doing yourself a disservice by ignoring the person who is one of the greatest 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 helper counselor comforter advocate and intercessor from working in your life the blessed holy spirit now let's read now this is from the amplified bible james chapter 5 verse 16 that you may be healed and restored to a spiritual tone of mind and heart you know when someone is out of tone out of tune it's jarring that's how your life will become if you don't confess and get out of your problem your life will not be in tune with others you will be always out of tune are you listening you look at a person if their life is not in tune with god they are out of tune and everybody will know it except them they think nothing is wrong with me they don't know everything is wrong with them and nothing is wrong with the lord or with anyone else why because they have chosen error ahead of god they have chosen to put away their first love 
they have chosen to walk away from what God has revealed to them and now they have started adding to their own ideas and thoughts more and more things that are not in line with the word more revelation more uh, things that they claim are spiritual but they are not in line with God's word that's why we are addressing it right now don't ever go and sit at graveyards tombstones and begin to talk to those uh, dead loved ones asking them to talk on your behalf to God never do it again I repeat it never do it it doesn't matter who they are they can be anyone they can be your parents they can be your spouse they can be your child they can be a friend they can be your mentor don't go to anyone's tomb and sit there and talk to the dead person requesting the dead person to intercede on your behalf to God about a problem in your life now let me continue reading from James chapter 5 and verse 16 I'm reading from the Amplified Bible the earnest heartfelt continued prayer of a righteous man makes tremendous power available dynamic in its working are you listening that means when a righteous man prays who's that you when you walk in the righteousness of Christ as a Christian believer it's referring to you it makes tremendous power available that means you have tremendous power not ordinary power supernatural power and it's dynamic in its working the two things about this word dynamic you get two words out of this word in Greek one is dynamo and one is dynamite one is explosive power and one is self-generating power you must understand that these words are used in the book of Ephesians in chapter 1 when there are about five words used there for the word power five different words so right now we are not going to that but I just want you to understand when you talk about it's dynamic and it's working, it's self-generating and it's working, it's also explosive and it's working. That means when the Holy Spirit is at work and tremendous power is at work, explosive things can happen. It can explode the works of darkness and make nothing. Everything that the devil is planning against your life. But please, don't ever, ever, ever let error into your heart where you substitute the person of the Holy Spirit with dead saints or idols or some so-called spiritual person who's receiving all the spiritual revelations and visions from a wrong deceiving spirit because there are many many unclean spirits in this world God doesn't want you to be deceived that's why he's talking to you that's why he's helping me to bring before your eyes what is acceptable in his sight from the word of God and what he detests. What he detests must be something you detest also. Don't go with it. Don't go after it. Don't substitute the Holy Spirit for anything evil. And always remember he is called the spirit of wisdom and understanding. I'd like to continue more about this the next time we meet. But right now we are going to pray. Understand in your spirit that when the Holy Spirit is at work, you have tremendous power available to you that is dynamic in its working. That should be cause enough for you to rejoice. That's why I keep repeating, don't play with error. Error is not something new to the body of Christ. Error has, has been in manifestation ever since there has been a true revelation of God given to God's people and there have been a few that have always fallen away. To start off with they didn't fall away. To start off with they were also part of everyone who was moving in line with God's spirit. But somewhere along the line, these people who walk in error believe that they know more than the rest. 
They know more than the others. And they don't have to take any kind of teaching from anybody. And that's when the spirit of error begins to enter into their heart and mind. And they turn many from unrighteousness. Oh, sorry, many from righteousness to unrighteousness. They turn everyone away from God. And the end of such people is miserable. They're going to pray and close. And I want you to understand that the Holy Spirit has been dealing with a few of you this day. If you're the person I'm talking to and you're the person who has been doing these things, just get out of them. Come back to God. Repent. Repent is not a very complicated word. A very simple word. It means have a change of heart and mind. Come back to God. Humble yourself. Say, God, I blew it. I made a mistake. And I don't want to continue in this mistake. Give me the grace and the inner strength to overcome this desire that I have always to do it. And sometimes if you are given to hitting out at God through doing things that is displeasing in his sight, you know that it's not, wrong, it's not right for you to go and sit in the cemetery, but you are purposely doing it. You purposely want to show your uh, dissent against God. You are making a big mistake. God's not your enemy. You have only one enemy and that's the devil. And you must know that God is for you and not against you. Let's pray. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, I pray for every single person who has listened to the sound of my voice. I pray for those who have been hurting. Oh God, over the past many days, I pray for those who have been letting their hearts and minds accept error and who have been following error for a couple of months now, O oh Father. We pray in the mighty name of Jesus that there will be a change of heart and a change of mind and repentance that will come upon them, O oh Father. That they will turn from the error of their ways. That they will know like Balaam was told by the angel, your ways are perverse before God. And lo, these three times, if the ass had not turned away, I would have struck you and killed you. Oh, precious Father, precious Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will move upon your people. You will show them that your word is eternal. Your promises are eternal. That you are eternally good. That there is no iota of evil in you. In the mighty name of Jesus, blessed Holy Spirit, touch individuals wherever they are. Families, wherever they are. Even if they are listening to the sound of my voice from a hospital bed or wherever they find themselves in. Let them know that you are there with them, O oh Father. Your arm is not short that it cannot save. Your ear is not heavy that it cannot hear. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Reach out and touch them right where they are, O oh God. Show them your mercy. Show them your mercy, O Lord. And let them know that when your mercies are in operation, there is a host of things that are kept from afflicting them and affecting them. Even though they rightly deserve to be afflicted and affected. O precious Father, you surround everyone with love and faith this day. Continue to speak to hearts and minds and fulfill your good pleasure in people's lives for your glory. In Jesus' name we pray and everybody said, Amen and Amen. Now may the blessing of God the Father, the blessing of God the Son, and the blessing of God the Holy Spirit rest and abide with each one of us, both now and until Jesus comes again. Amen. And Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. My friend, be of good cheer. That's what God wants you to know. He wants you to be encouraged this day. Depression is not from Him. If you are even having slight symptoms of depression, I want you to resist it in the name of Jesus and to invite the blessed person of the Holy Spirit to set you free. Don't ignore Him. Don't substitute him with anyone 
especially dead spirits and try to make them do the intercession for you on your behalf it cannot be done that's number one number two to even insist that they do it is to put yourself in a big mess remember when Saul tried to do it by raising up the dead spirit of Samuel he was in a big mess instead of a blessing coming he received the curse of not having a full life that he could have lived like David David the Bible says when he died he died full of riches honor and long life that's how he died he had so many instances where the sword could have killed him but God never left David God stood with David why because he was a man according to God's own heart's desire he loved God's Holy Spirit read Psalm 51 you will certainly be moved by the agonizing cry that goes out from David when he says don't take your Holy Spirit from me you cannot be so unmoved when you read Psalm 51 it's one of the most most uh, touching Psalms that I have read and it always works uh, work in my life when I read it you can he literally feel the pain in his voice when he's saying don't take your Holy Spirit from me that was the person of David but Saul was a different character influenced by unclean spirits influenced by unclean thoughts completely out of beat with the anointing and the Holy Spirit he was doing mistake after mistake after mistake after mistake finally he went and caught a witch at of Endor disguised himself went and sat before a witch when he should have been before the anointed of God remember there were many anointed people he never went after them he was running after a witch and that too to try to bring up the spirit of Samuel you can imagine how desperate he must have been to have done such a thing God understands the desperation in people's hearts and minds but that's not an excuse for you to reject the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the best person you can have in this world to help you God bless you to share these teachings with others there are many people who've got to hear about this because they need to know that error is not so simple it can make you lose the presence of the Holy Spirit altogether in your life from manifesting himself God bless you Hallelujah stuti mahima illa kundu devu ni kichadam Hallelujah stuti mahima illa kundu devu ni kichadam Ah Hallelujah 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 Ah Hallelujah Hallelujah, Stuti Mahima, Ella, Kudu Devu Niki Chedamu. Hallelujah, Stuti Mahima, Ella, Kudu Devu Niki Chedamu. Allah Sainya Mula Kuvadhi Pati Aina. आ देवु निस्तुति चेदमु अल सैन्य मुलतु वधिपति आइना आ देवु निस्तुति चेदमु अल सांद्र मुलनु दातिंचिना आ यहोवा निस्तुति चेदमु अल सांद्र मुलनु दातिं China, I Yehova Nustuti Chedamu Hallelujah Stuti Mahima Ella Kudu Devu Niki Chedamu Hallelujah Stuti Mahima Ella Kudu Devu Niki Chedamu 
Make sure you don't miss receiving our free monthly newsletter, The Pulpit, which contains a four-part teaching series on various Bible topics that will help you live in victory. You can read it online by going to Christchapel.in and click on ebook library where you will find all our newsletters available. To receive a physical copy of Pulpit, you can go to Christchapel.in and click on Join Now and fill in your complete postal mailing address along with your contact mobile number and we will be happy to send it to you free and postpaid. Should you want to receive the newsletter via email, do include your request along with your current email ID. Thank you and God bless.